Today, November 18, 2019, it's a webinar about Wise Option 6. Um, if you get your questions ready, we're going to start shortly. First, a few announcements on our Facebook page. We had the chance to announce the official launching for a global vet link integration with Wise Option. So if you have your global vet link account, it's possible now to do the integration directly into the program. So from Wise Option, we have instructions. We also recommend all our users to participate in our groups. There's discussion groups that you can associate and watch e-learnings. Another thing we'd like to let users know is about the option in the help where you can watch the tutorials, e-learning videos. We are recording a pretty good chunk of e-learnings very often. Let me see if I can open also here our YouTube channel. You just go to youtube.com and over there you're just going to type Wiseoption Equine. And this is our channel. On our discussion, you're going to grab and get a notification every time there's a new video on the YouTube channel. But if you subscribe here, you're going to receive emails every time we put a new version. This one uh, goes hand in hand with what we have in our libraries, <clears throat> in our library for videos. The only difference is that on this one here, we are organizing the chapters, you know, the videos into chapters and uh, lessons. So you can see each one of the different topics. Recently, I was recording some videos for the mare management since we are getting close to the breeding season. So we should have a bunch of new videos coming onto this one here as well. We were recording videos for stallion management. Some just uh, continue education about new things on Wise Option 6. What else? Uh, was just confirming my presence to the AAEP. So we're going to be attending AAEP this year. If you are coming along, just let, in, let us know. We would like to, you know, maybe get together somewhere. If you have any other peers, that are coming as well. Uh, we don't have a booth, but we'll be around. And if you have questions, if you'd like to interact, or if you'd like to have some, you know, one-on-one -on -one for training or suggestions, please let me know. My text message is always open. Also, I would like to give you guys, uh, again, my contact information to those who don't have that yet. And also Shahid's, this is Shahid's phone number. Let me grab his number here real quick. I never memorize. Shahid, Shahid, Shahid. It is 214. There you go. 214-989-7690. This is Shahid's. Usually Shahid is going to be your help up to the login. If you have any problems, up to the login before you get into the program itself contact Shahid he most likely is going to be the one helping you with the program but if it is anything after the login probably it's going to be with me um, another th new thing that we have on our uh, Facebook page you guys are now able to schedule appointments for remote training sessions we are still testing this so we have two types of sessions. We have a free software consulting. We are promoting this. If you have any farms or colleagues that you'd like to let them know about Wise Option, they have a 30 minute free session for consulting and we can help them with questions on Wise Option. And we say free consulting because of course, we are trying to uh, clarify about the use of the program but our intention here is to, if the person is not a good fit, we would like to, you know, help them and tell the best uh, resources for their needs if they're not quite ready for a wise option. So just take the, the chance. And if you have any friends who would like to explore a little bit more, 
but if you are in a wise option support you just select the wise option support and then you can pick the dates and you can select the you know the times and schedule the session through the facebook page as well another announcement that we have was um, we had a glitch that somebody found in the program and that's a recall we should we we're gonna have a an update coming out tomorrow so if you go to the breeding contract somebody found that we were trying to do some improvements on performance and accidentally we screwed up a little bit on the contracts so if you do any query on the breeding contracts it's going to come empty but that doesn't mean your contracts disappeared they just uh, are not showing because you know we we made a, a bad entry here the contracts are there and tomorrow if you're having the problems with the breeding contracts you cannot see your breeding contracts just wait for tomorrow contact shahid and he's going to install a new version for you at your earliest convenience um as always um we're gonna besides the this will be other stuff keep checking the help and list of new features to you know know what's in the latest version so you can be on top of things and i think that's pretty much my um announcements that i have for today let me check the chat window we don't have any questions there yet it's an open floor so please feel free to uh, let me know i see elizabeth and joe noble it's contacted with us how are you guys doing If you click on the icon for the microphone, you can open the communication so we can have some chat over here. Do you, do you guys have any questions for us today? All right, so it seems that that's, we're gonna have just an open floor here, nobody is with questions, which is a good thing. I don't know if it's because breeding season is still around the corner. We are getting close to Thanksgiving. People are slowing down a little bit. The show, uh, the the season for shows and and fit and 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 you know contracts and sell sales are pretty much slowing down right now. We are getting close to the holidays. I don't know if people are getting anxious nervous or really trying not to think about it but actually breeding season is indeed around the corner and you should start very soon um just to go touching base again on the global vet link if you go to integrations over here gvl and connect to global vet links it's pretty much two parts you just enter your credentials on this one here this is just a test thing but um, once you do this, you go to the website and global vet link. And once you do the global vet link over there, you can have the links and start working with your patients right away. Uh, we have put a video also in our discussion group, and you should be able to explore those over there. Today, uh, I would like to touch base with you guys about, you know, a question that comes to us very, very often, which is about which one is the best for me, DCS, macros, or task finder? It's all actually a matter of preference. People go for different, you know, depending on, on situations. But one thing in those that people are usually not aware of it's the custom description. Custom description is one of the things that it's pretty handy if you are doing, if you'd like the program to make some comments for you and how to calculate comment, uh, quantities. A, a good example is when you're doing for lameness exams or, or joint injections or x-rays. Wise Option allows you to create a custom wizards where you can uh, point out, you know, um, specific uh, structure on the animal and then select those. So it will automatically calculate each one of uh, the charges based on your description. But not only that, based on your selection, it will also customize the description 
on the invoice. So let's say, for example, that I'm do a, I'm a vet on a truck and I'm going to do an ambulatory work. I'm going to create a, an invoice for this patient and I'm going to start charging a couple of things here. And on my charges, for example, I'm going to do, so let me see here if I have x-ray. I don't think I have x-ray on this uh, system. No, I don't. Um, let me try. I have some fake drugs. Let me try to just use one of these drugs as an example. I'm going to use 10 mils of this drug, supposing this is a particular injection. And uh, as soon as I have the charge, and I'm doing through the regular charge because I need to go to this charge uh, cust um, charge engine. This screen here we call in wise option the charge engine. And the charge engine is one of the places where you're going to have access to the custom description. As soon as I click on the custom description, the program allows you, just like, um, you know, um, DCSs or, or task files, you can create custom descriptions. And, for example, in the, in the nerves, you can have difference. All of these you can customize at your like. So if you say this is a particular injection and I have created this, this doesn't come with the program. First, you create a wizard, then you put one title over here. And as soon as you create that title injections, you can start adding to that injections. In my particular case, I, could, I create a left front, right front, left hind, right hind, and I put all the possible joints. So I could here, you know, uh, select. I did one for radio for nerve blocks, and I did one for radiographs. So once you do, you know, you do your selection. You just pick whatever it is, and off you go. I'm going to stick with my injections because in my particular example, I'm pretending it is a, a, an injection. So let's say that I, I'm going to put, you know, I did injection in in these two joints. So I have now four joints. As soon as I submit this, the program asks, do you want to change the task links quantities because it's knowing that it's doing that proportionally. So now it's applying that automatically. And guess what? It also did a extra comment for me here, giving me the description of the joints that I did. So this is very uh, helpful because when you are doing, you know, you just select the drug, you point the, the joints, it calculates automatically, especially if you're creating some cocktails or formulas, it will automatically adjust the quantity for the cocktails. And most importantly, it will, uh, you know, describe automatically for you what is the joints that you have presented and automatically multiplies. Uh, we have this option here to show because there's an exception in discounts. This is something also new. I'm gonna talk about this shortly. But the idea about custom, dis dis uh, custom wizard description is this. So again, it works from ad charges. You can also work from, from macros, but for macros, you would have to, when you create the macros, um, set up a specific uh, flag for the program to ask you about that. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm going to go here again for, uh, let's say, a procedure, procedure D. And I'm going to say the procedure D is I'm going to call PROC DD. And if I flag here custom description, the program is going to ask me, you know, to do that custom description to that particular um, wizard. And as soon as I save, I think I should stick with a, any other drug. Let me exit out here and I'm going to do a drug again. I'm going to do a different drug. Let me find this drug F uh, units mills. I'm going to say 15 mills on this one. And I'm going to say F 15 and I'm going to put the custom description and save. So because of this flag, every time I use this particular macro, 
it is going to ask me for the custom description selection. So I'm going to do F15 and I'm going to hit enter. Look, it's coming for my injections and I'm going to say coffin joint, coffin joint. So I have four submit quantities proportionally. Yes. And it did it, and it applied the exception because this horse has an exception. We talked about exception. There are some e-learnings about exceptions. But let me go for the invoices so you can see what I'm talking about here again. And if I go scroll down, so I had my injections, 60 mils because it was 50 each one. And um, it gives me the custom description. It's just very helpful if you're working with, especially x-rays. I think x-rays is going to be one of the most popular one, but it works with nerve blocks. It work, works with the joint injections and stuff like that. Um, custom description, that's what I had to tell you guys about. And as far as the exceptions, how to show the discounts and exception, that's actually in the customer file. If you go to the customer file, in this particular customer here, I'm going to go to the billing options. And in the billing options, I'm going to say this customer does not want to see details. I don't want to, you know, show discounts and exception. This is on a per customer basis. So if I go back to that invoice now and I show the print option, It is no longer showing the discounts breakdown or exception breakdown because on a per customer basis, I did that exception to not show up in the invoice. Now, a few differences here that I should mention. Notice that I have one invoice open and this invoice here right now, of course, I'm not going to the customer account. I'm not talking about statements in the customer account. So when I click the print and I am on the invoice, it is going to use the billing options set for that particular customer. On the other hand, now I'm going to close this invoice. And now that the invoice is closed, next step, I go to the customer account. And within the customer account, I have now the invoice that I just created. And when I print my options, Again, this here, let me, let's take a look inside. First, we're going to, first page, of course, is always the statement. This is also new. People are really liking this, the aging accounts receivable. It's an option in your settings for printing out. And as you can see here in my invoices, I don't have any discount and exception because I am on an individual basis. And when I am on that customer, wise option is going to follow when I'm on the customer doing only one customer wise option is going to do according to the billing options. On the other hand, if I am doing on a massive way, how to show discounts and exceptions in the invoices, let me go to tools and billing. Over there in a massive way, I'll pick a few customers here just for the sake of showing. Print selected ones. Yes. Now, this is the massive billing. And you're going to have exceptions, discounts in different options. If I force here, don't show at all, regardless customer options, wise option will not show whatsoever. Show for all customers, regardless customer billing, it will not show. In this case here, it will show the discounts and exceptions if they do exist. Or option number three, show according to each customer billing options. So you have three situations that you can say, don't show at all, forced to show discount and exceptions, or 
show according to new customers, uh, each customer's uh, billing options properties. So this, it's the option only available when you're coming here to the massive billing at the end of the month. Another thing that I want to remind you guys is, okay, how about new customers? Every time you have new customers, Wise Options Tools and Options, how to set up the billing options for new customer accounts. You go to the default, and if I uncheck this option here and I click OK, from this point on, every time I create a new customer account, the new customer accounts will start with this particular settings. So I'm going to click OK, and this is what's going to be used in the new customer account. Another thing that is new that you should, you guys should see on the next uh, update is that this automated charges used to be the last button and the summary statements would, you know, I just, we just inverted the order between these two buttons here. Automated charges is here. Now auto used to be the last. Now automated charges is one before last. The reason we have done that is because, you know, you go through your, things and you do frozen storage, you create your invoices. And we were sending statements right here. And after sending statements, users were charging credit cards. Therefore, the statements they sent out are outdated because there is now a charge in the statement. So somebody caught our attention to that. We thought, yeah, it does make sense. So first we create the invoices. We go for the accounts you have automated charge. In other words, those accounts that have been set to process credit card automatically at the end of each month. And after you charge those, then you go for the summary statements and you provide the statements with the very latest credits as well. So that was just one quick change that we have made here and uh, should make things more straightforward. Closing my tabs. Okay, let me take a look at my notes here, see if I can seize the opportunity to record a couple of more things. Oftentimes users were having problems when dealing with trees like this and rearranging moving one to top parent and the list was disappearing we took a few i'm taking a look at my list of new features this is one thing that is improving so this list should not disappear anymore another thing that is coming on the new version you guys are going to see tomorrow is on the recurring Right here on the corner, somewhere on this side here, you're going to see the option to change the font size for the grid view. So you can customize that too. We did a big time review on the check-in process and on the charge button. This module has been reviewed. We could decrease the time for processing in about 60%. So it should be at least half of the time it used to be to charge the recurring. It's now um, a way to do that and you can just charge and it should be faster. Question coming from NobleVet, it's um, if there's a way to print out the entire task list. I don't think we have a feature there to in the task list to print this out. Uh, what you can do, you have the PDF export and you have the Excel export. So you can create your list settings and then you can do your queries and you can also then go for the PDF and Excel. Next question coming from Noble is, with prices. Wise option pricing, it's way 
way, way more comprehensive in wise option if you pick any product or anything that you have pricing you're going to notice that the program allows you to go deep in different situations <coughs> excuse me the pricing is a complex scenario here for us to talk about for the following reasons when you go for the pricing wise option considers we have several pricing tables in the backstage of the program. So for example, prices can vary based on certain variables. One of them is profit center. It's almost uh, just a couple of places I, have, uh, places I have seen using profit center today, but it's one of the variables changing prices. Another variable changing prices, it's when you start a new invoice for a patient. Let me show you something here real quick. Let me pick here uh, this patient and I'm going to create a new. Another thing that changes prices is based on the invoice, invoice option. I could have, you know, uh, let's say lameness exam. I could charge outpatient lames exam would be $120. But if I am going to the farm, the lames exam is going to be $150. If I am going to a show, the lameness exam is $200. And if the patient is hospitalized, I can charge $100. So based on the type of the invoice, it's a, another variable that the program creates prices. Not only that, there's one more variable. Let's say that I'm going to create an outpatient invoice. When I'm creating an invoice, any type of invoice, you have the chance to establish scenarios. So scenario is another uh, variable. And some examples of different scenarios would be regular hours, emergency hours, after hours. So each one of these items could have a price of differentiation. So if outpatient lameness exam is $120, outpatient or lameness exam during emergency hours or after hours, nights and weekends, I could put $150 here and the after hours I would put $180 here. So I can customize the prices based on those variables, profit center, invoice type, and scenarios. Back to my task file. If you highlight the task and you go for your retail prices, you're gonna see that the program, let me try to, actually, let me use this, it's easier. So do you see I have different practices because in this particular uh, demo database, I have more than one branch, but for all practices, then I have profit centers, which is this table over here. Most, most places are just working with general charts. Let's for a moment ignore um, the profit center. Profit centers could be, you know, so many things I have seen. I will not even dive into profit centers here today because it can be so many things. I'm going to just skip the profit center explanation for now. But after that, you're going to see the types of invoices. And if I go, for example, like the outpatient that I was talking about, when I click here, you're going to see my scenarios. So here, it's where I would say, okay, my regular hours price for this would be 120. My emergency price for this would be 150. My after hours would be 180. All scenarios, those that are not determined, I'm gonna stick with the regular. And if I'm going to a show, I'm gonna say it's gonna be 160. So as you can see, I can build different prices and you can do this for drugs. You can do this for whatever you want. Okay. 
I could set all of them for, for 120, which is another option. I could say every everything in the program is 120. And after doing that, I go for the specifics. I set up the 120 first. Let me go for all practices, general charge, outpatient. And now, because I changed all of them, I could now say here, okay, this is going to be all scenarios, regular hour, 120 emergency. I'm going to change again to 150. And I'm going to change uh, all after hours to 180. And if it's in the show, I'm going to do 200. Regular hours, emergency, all scenarios. Okay, this is good. So let's say that I'm going to a show outpatient. Uh, let's do an emergency after, uh, let's do a weekend after hours for aspirin. This is crazy. I, I was thinking about leaving this exam and I was with the aspirin, but you got the picture. Anyhow, I'm going to go back here and uh, crazy love. I'm not going to open this. I'm going to go new record outpatient. And I'm just saying, guess what? This is after hours. As soon as I select after hours, you're going to see that right here on top, the program is also considering after hours. So if I go for my aspirin and I enter just one unit at 120, it is outpatient. I did something wrong here. After hours, weekend. Let me go back there. Aspirin. Unit price. Profit center general. Close it all. I should have. Oh, I am. Uh, I didn't do that because I am on branch one. This is a multi branch. All practice is going to work. So if I do here general charge, outpatient. Let me do just the after hours. It's 120 still. So $200 for after hours aspirin. Again, it doesn't make sense the price here, but I just want to, I was with my mind on leaving this XM and working with. So let me try it again. I'm going to exit out. Bingo, $200. So this is why we do not, all this long answer is just to explain you the reason why we don't put prices over here. Because it's not safe for us to put on screen something that it's so variable. We have options though. First option that as far as prices you can go, it's to create your own price tables. So if you need something printed out with prices, I would go for possibly tools, estimates, and I would do maybe a price check. Because here in the price check, you have the chance to say the profit center, the invoice type, and the scenario. So you determine everything here you can say miscellaneous, which is usually reproduction things. You go for the profit center, you leave the general, which is more likely. Your, if, you, if you click here on top, you can return to the regular hours. And now you create your price table over here. And then you're going to have on the screen. If you need to put this on paper, instead of price check, I would do the estimate and then you can print out the estimate. So that would be one of the options I have to offer you today. Uh, and, and this way we feel safe to put the price on screen based on this specific scenarios and situations about pricing. Uh, not only that, you can save the template and anytime you just go back here, 
you just use a save template and you're going to have the prices for that specific list adjusted and on the screen for you to answer questions on the phone. Let me give you one more option. The other option is for you to go. This is a little bit dangerous, though. This one here, it's more for administrator. I'd like you guys to be careful about this one. More powers, you know, you have more responsibilities. Uh, it's dangerous because this is um, next place I'm going to show you is where exactly where you can, in a massive way, update costs and prices. And this, now I'm going to show you guys, uh, probably uh, you must have the impact modules available for you to use what I'm going to show you next. Main menu tools, you go to data, and in data, you're going to go for massive update. And here in the massive update, let me find the proper one here. This one here, retail cost and price massive update. It's exactly the same list you have in your task lists in the task management, task files, but this one here is going to show you all the products, all the units, all the containers, the retail cost and the retail price. And here you will be able to change all of them on the spot, okay? So here you're gonna have, for example, butte. I have butte repeated one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times because it shows the butte milliliter, the bottle with it. Excuse me, 100 mils, 250 mils. Grams, the tube, milliliters with a different concentration and so on. But you have all the costs and all the price and you can change everything here on screen. So if you say that, you know, this one here, let me grab, for example, these uh, administration fee here. It's 13, the generous 13 and 8 and 15 for this one here. So now I'm going to do this one here is going to be 12. Let me see here. Show all drop down list box previews. So this is the previous. So this is where you change. So this one here is going to be 12. This one here is going to be seven. As you can see, the colors change. And again, but this would be probably the place where you could go and have all your pricings for all task lists and also export to Excel. So this one here that it was five, I'm going to put now six dollars tab. I can change costs. So this column is previous retail cost, updated retail cost, previous retail price, updated retail price, two for costs and two for price. You just keep changing, change all your products. It's going to give you everything that you need to change. And once you're done, you hit save and you're going to easily update in a massive way. But again, this is in the impact modules. Uh, just showing this to you because it's kind of a hidden spot in the program. People would like to know about this. And a few options that you can have here on top, it's, you know, drop down list box. Instead of showing Butte eight times, you just show Butte one time with the drop down list box and then you pick the one that you want to change. If you pick show alls, it, that's when it's going to break down in multiple levels. So you can have that breakdown like that. And there are some options when you are updating the cost. So if I need, if I send the updated cost for this one here to $3 and I say update material cost, highest level, latest and average, this is updating the three levels of cost, which is a different lesson that we can have in, in the future about the inventory module in Wise Option. Just trying to seize the time here and explain about a couple of things in the programs that are hidden there. Not everybody know about it. 
not trying to confuse you guys, but to show you that there's way more that we haven't touched yet. And hopefully through the learnings, we're going to be able to, you know, customize more details and explore those options and, in, in uh, um, you know, present to you as we go. Hope I'm asking your question, Noble. Let me know if you have more. But yes, this uh, scenarios and, and pricing and stuff, it's really, really uh, complex. We put the ver we put some lessons out there as uh, in the tutorials that I don't know if you guys had the chance to explore, but we were exploring uh, here in the, there you go, tasks. Come on. All right, there you go. How to operate with task exceptions. So I created some examples, some videos. And so you can explore the videos on the different exceptions. Simple, just change the price with multiple levels. Let me just test this, see if it's coming up with a video on screen. Yep, it's working as expected. And on you go with our task exceptions. Yep, it's going good. All right, I think that's all I have for you. If you don't have more questions for me, uh, just again, it would be really helpful if you guys can go to our, you know, Facebook page and put some comments. I would appreciate if you take the time. We are looking for some, you know, improving our 4.7 here. We would love to have our five stars. We're doing our best to really give you guys materials and be on top of things. So we deserve your trust and also good grade. Um, give it a try, give it a shot for our appointment. This is a, a beta test that we are doing. Breeding contracts problems are coming. Thank you for the comment on the video. Yeah, we and use the discussion group to let us know if um, you know if there's which sections you'd like to see coming first to you if you have preference about certain chapters areas in the program that you are more curious about i will prioritize whatever i get uh in the program in the discussion group to record those videos first uh, global vet link we have received a very nice feedback you know it seems to be very very helpful especially because there's one function there the the, the global vet link thing that i'd like to tell you guys is you know it's going to take some time i would focus primarily on the horses you have on premises and try to create a match to have the global vet link in the video, I'm explaining in details how to create the link, but to have this button here showing green, which means you have a successful link between the two IDs, wise option ID and global vet link ID for that patient. Once you get over that phase, it's gonna be really easy because every time you have a new horse, in wise option you go there and from wise, wise option is going to add that patient for you into global vet link so very very seldom you're going to have to visit the global vet link website after this integration once you have all the patients all the horses uh, linked to global vet link in wise option that's going to take a while i understand that but after that, every year when you have to run your Coggins exam, guess what? You can go here in your integration in the Global Vet link and request tests for patients, for multiple patients in one screen. So when you go to that screening wise option, you're going to have here a list of all the patients, linked patients, patients you already connected between wise option and global vet link and you simply select which particular test that you want to perform make your remarks and reasons whatever check the boxes and as you add the test all those patients you're going to add those tests for all the patients in one single click so that's going to be very helpful 
and you will be able to make that, make that entry right on, you know, on the fly in a very, you know, um, easy way to do things. All the different labs that are available here. So you can perform that right on, you know, really on the spot. I think this is it for now. Um, I'm going to schedule uh, next webinar is going to be uh, a week after next. We are getting close to the end of the year. We're going to be close to next week. We're going to have a Thanksgiving. So most people will be traveling uh, maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. On the first week of December, we're going to have our next webinar. And um, probably we're going to close as the, going to be the last one for the year. After that, on the 7th, I will be attending AAP. If you guys gonna going to get together there, just shoot me an email or text message. We're going to find the time to get together. And in January, we'll be back here and ready to go and get started with the breeding season. Ready or not, here we go. Thanks for coming, and I hope to see you guys next time. Have a great evening. Bye now.